welcome. I am Exit Light, and this is my channel. And today I'm going to tell you the haunting history of a Canadian national park. Before we get started, if you are not subscribed and you would like to be, please do so. And if you do, please click that bell so you'll be notified when my content goes up. And if you are liking this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. And if you want to share it or leave a comment, that helps as well. So let's get started talking about this scary national park. The Northwest Territories Valley of the Headless Men is steeped in lore and legend. Dark mountain spires pierce the fog against a steely sky making Nahani National Park seem more akin to Mordor than Canada. The park can only be accessed by boat or float plane by travelers seeking to conquer the rapids of the Nahani River or summit the formidable Cirque of the Unclimbables. Its impenetrable forest and mountains may be the primary reason why Nahani sees very few park visitors. But perhaps it's also because the park is shrouded in macabre legends befitting of its menacing landscape. The supernatural lore has earned Nahani, the moniker, the Valley of the Headless Men. And many believe that this World Heritage Site is haunted. When British writer and explorer Raymond Patterson set out to the Nahani region from Fort Smith in 1927, he received an ominous piece of advice. He was told, quote, men vanish in that country and down the river they say it's damned good country to keep clear of. Lured by the reports of gold in the area, brothers Frank and Willie McLeod journeyed from Edmonton, Alberta to the Nahani Range in 1904. They were traveling with very primitive gear. It was 1904. They traversed hundreds of miles by train, boat, and foot during a ridiculously cold winter until they reached Gold Creek. Now, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that maybe a creek called Gold Creek has gold. I'm just saying. Their efforts for that hard work was rewarded that very year and they returned to their home in Fort Laird with gold in hand. However, not being satisfied, the brothers made a second expedition into the Nahani Range in 1905 and then they never returned. Nothing was heard from, from Frank and Willie, until their brother Charlie McLeod led a search into the park in 1908. And that's when Charlie discovered two skeletons at the camp on a river's edge in a vast valley. What was strange about the skeletons? Well, they were missing their heads and one of the men lay with his arm reaching out towards his gun. The blankets were thrown across his brother as if he had leapt suddenly from bed and then something happened to him and his head. It was from that day forward that the valley has been known as Dead Man Valley and the creek called 
Headless Creek. But it wasn't just the McLeod brothers who died or went missing in the park in the early 20th century. A Scottish engineer who had been traveling with them and was never seen again, and a Yukon prospector, Martin Jorgensen, met a similar fate in 1917. He had sent news home that he had, quote, struck it rich in the area. Not long afterwards, his decapitated skeleton was found outside his cabin, which had also been burned to the ground, which spawned rumors of headhunters in the valley. Numerous other reports from the Royal Canadian Mountain Police confirmed similar deaths, and a good number of people have simply vanished without a trace after setting foot in that park. Around the same time in the park's history, a series of unexplained plane crashes earned an expanse of mountains the name Funeral Range, which borders the very ominous Hell's Gate Rapids. These seemingly supernatural deaths are only part of the mystery that Nahani National Park is steeped in. Since the first Diné people settled there 10,000 years ago, the lore of hidden tropical gardens, mythical creatures, and spirits hiding in the park's hot springs and tufa mounds has been abundant. Quote, I once heard a Deco chief tell stories of an ancient giant who would cook his food in the springs, says Joel Hibbard. So, whether giants roam the park or not, the hot springs do hold a special cultural significance for the Decho who leave offerings like tobacco at the springs so they will receive good luck. It is said if the springs are full, it's a very good sign. Later in the 19th century, UFO sightings and other strange lights were reported in the park, and to this day, fringe bloggers obsessed with cryptids recount stories of Amphicyonidae, a predatory bear and dog hybrid that used to exist, but supposedly went extinct in the Pliocene period. It would prowl the valley as well as signs of Bigfoot activity in forbidden parts of the park. Certain areas within Nahani are closed to visitors because of their sensitive ecosystems or their cultural significance to the indigenous people. But some say the restrictions are as much about containing the park's supernatural forces as they are about keeping people out. While the headless deaths have all been confirmed by the police and attributed to maybe less mystical causes, maybe the greed and rivalry that marked the gold rush area, as well as the brutal, dangerous reality of isolation in the wilderness, the lore simply remains part of Nahani National Park's mystery and allure. For the record, I don't think that the isolation of a park removes your head. What is also very real is the park's sacred mythological presence in the collective Canadian psyche, which may work to help protect the area from further mining and environmental exploitation. Quote, people will protect a legend even if they've never seen it. These haunting and otherworldly accounts also serve as an allegory for the terrifying void 
that is nature itself. The fear of the unknown in the wild, uncharted land, is part of the siren song that explorers will always answer. But will they keep their heads? Thank you for coming to my channel, and good night.